Now, fixing placements so that default editor buttons are not rendered when editing a comment. Okay, it's fixing because because it was showing a wrong yeah. button. Yeah, even in the admin, not just on the front end when you are having a comment. I see, good. Then on one ten x branch uh, dynamic form selling form submission dot form name token form submission dot form name okay so you can use that in a workflow for example okay media library fixing that renaming files to reserved windows name should cause an error fixing path validation. Yeah, you actually do. You don't read. Oh, it's an actual exception. Okay, but usually we don't oh, no. localize. Wait, 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 wait a sec. I think I, I had an incoming call and now I can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god. Please, not just you. Uh, it's funny because so we have so I, I don't think I don't remember last time Ara joined us or Brian. They they are like these guys are <laughs> jokes, but it never is. <laughs> what is going on on this call, Sebastian? Yeah, and we always record it. It's all beautiful, and now today it's everything after. No, no, no. It, it's, it's like this every time, but they just don't know because yep. they are not attending, not attending every meeting. <laughs> Mike, no, no. Mike, Brian, and myself, this is our, are all from the cloud team. Mike also, okay. Oh, so, nice. Don't worry about it. They build nice. all the things with Orchard Core now. Um, okay, media library fixing that renaming files to reserve windows. And I was saying that usually we don't localize exception messages, but it's an orchard exception, so that's fine. Uh, and to rename file, okay, just new messages. Then I form deleting validation element driver. Deleting validation element driver. It commented out completely, so. Okay. Fixing validator. Typos and that's not that's breaking, but we don't care. Nobody's using that directly. It's just to provide UI. Yeah. Validator. Validator. Also copy pasting. Oh my god. Layout forms must be Sipka. We'll blame Sipka for that. Uh, no, it wasn't Sipka, but you can have another guess. Um, Taxonomy element driver, dynamic form, dynamic forms, importing and exporting a taxonomy element now uses identity. Yeah. So, you know, when you are importing, exporting layouts, um, there's a special kind of information for content items, which is export, um, exportable data or something like that. Anyway, it means it's, yeah, exportable data. So that's usually, usually identity part or auto route part information so that when you um, import and export it between different applications, you you don't lose the information. Um, so I have a question. Yeah. You know, I'm super expert in Orchard, in everything for Orchard, because I've worked on that for 10 years, and I wrote yeah. a lot of code on that. Uh, yeah. I know identity is very important. It's like a, a logical identifier for a content item or for anything. I assume for the import export, and I know it's very important for import export, so we can relate things right and mm -hmm. there is an identity part if something cannot have its own identity like with a name or anything we don't have anything like this in orchard core so what are we missing <laughs> in orchard i'm i'm lost now i forgot about why we needed that and i'm sure we don't need that in orchard core because when we did the import export we didn't need that but now i'm i'm you, you don't need it you don't need it Orchard Core in Orchard Core because everything by default has a, a grid. Item which, yeah, a grid which is unique and defined by the, yeah, and okay. Yeah. And kept across yeah, right. export exports. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Thank you. Thank you because we just use integers in Orchard One. Good, thank exactly. you. Dynamic forms, code styling in taxonomy element driver. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Really just post 
want the next you make a good choice of the branches like it good job ben -Lek. um untabifying blah 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 con navigation layout fixing grammar in menu widget part editor okay so it's changing the localization files to be displayed okay i was thinking actually uh, maybe we should like enhance the the pure file extractor to do some simple grammar checks or typo checks maybe that will help us find things uh, yeah well, you know i'm i'm still using Bertan, bertrand's module which is only what? compatible with orchard 1.6 yeah. so i have but a lucas, bart, <laughs> lucas bart has made one for orchard core um, oh. so we have nice. the same thing in orchard core so nice so yeah and antoine's making it, maintaining it well, he's the only one who knows how to use it apart from Lucas, so that's fine. Uh, but maybe we should try to do that. We, I'm sure we will find some things, some easy things like this by calling an API like a Bing API to do some checks. Maybe that should be doable. Removing length limitation for property edit view model rewrite text. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, actually <laughs> you reviewed that as well. Like, I don't know three years ago <laughs> and uh, um, so in the database it's already unlimited so there's no reason okay. to, to limit it okay fixing the localization service get localized content item should find translations within the group what do you mean yeah so the idea here is that let's say you have um uh us english as the as a site culture which is a default culture and let's say you have french and hungarian translations so if you if you say if you go to the to the French content item and and ask the service for its translations, you would get nothing. You would only get the French and Hungarian translations if you if you ask from the U.S. English content items perspective. So this changes that, and you get all the other translations from any. Okay, of the same group. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, FYI, um, this group. Okay, I think this is in Orchard Core, we have something called a localization set, which is a grid. And every content item is independent, but they have the localization set in a part that groups them. So they don't know, they don't have a master content item ID. They, have, they all have the same localization set. That's how they are grouped. So you could yeah. delete the, what, what you would call the master content item now. They will still work, the other ones. They will know each other because they have the same localization set. Um, yeah, and I think yeah, I, I took I took the IP from Drupal. Oh, nice. That was always a good inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we did that in Dev Branch actually uh, when we designed it with Matteo five years ago, I think. Um, okay, then localization code styling, then holes fixing and drying is in all activity. All conditions to be able to handle anonymous and authenticated. Okay, so this is this is uh, kind of tricky. So the idea is that when you are uh, looking at the is in role activity for a workflow or a role condition uh, when you are editing a layer rule, um, those are looking at um, the the user roles first. And if you have an authenticated user or an anonymous user, you wouldn't get those roles from from the user roles files because those are kind of implicit system yeah. permissions. Uh, system roles and um, actually the easy enroll activity uh, had a logic to ch to check for authenticated separately uh, but the but the role condition didn't have uh, didn't handle authenticated uh, nor uh, anonymous separately we, we do actually have a separate condition for authenticated so what I changed is that for both of those there's a, a common logic where it actually checks for the correct permission. So if the user, you, I user object is null, then, then we look at anonymous. Otherwise we look at authenticated plus whatever comes from user roles part. And now there's a, a common logic. So it's, it's not like two implementations doing the same thing in two different places, but it's just one 
uh, one place where it's where this logic is defined. And I also did some you know static typing for for okay. anonymous and authenticated. Yeah, at first I didn't see there was no double quote here. I'm like, why did you change the name of the anonymous? No, it's just a property. Okay, cool, cool. Then that branch one takes into dev, beautiful. And then the work on the dev branch. Look like the same thing. A user event handler change password. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sipka had this PR open for, I don't know, also three years or something like that. Good job. Sipka, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, right. He looks like we a model. Oh my god. Uh, enabling account control test with a password should be sent. Okay, so good. New test. Moving extension yeah, recipe well, execution. It was implemented for a long time, but it was, obs it was marked as ignored because it's not implemented, which is not okay. true anymore. Extension recipe execution from merchant module recipe phase step. So recipes. Yeah, so you know when you are executing recipes from modules, uh, that logic was in the orchard modules module. Yep. Now it's in the recipes, and when you execute a recipe, you also see. Message, which is very really nice. Well, now I can't hear you, yeah. But I heard you like, I don't know, 15 seconds ago. And now you can. Yeah. Too beautiful. It just, okay. Uh, that will happen again. But that's a minor pain compared to earlier. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we move that. Okay. Uh, cost styling, make uh, user friendly. Okay, fine. Uh, fixing not required data and finish to store a null value. I think we merged it. No, you merged it, but we looked at it recently. I see, and mm -hmm. you merged it. Yeah. So before that, it was you know, it was storing data and containing value, yeah. which is in some cases it's misleading. But then after that. I, I push the change because uh, daytime field has a default value, and actually all of the fields have now default value option. Mm -hmm. So we, so I had kind of had to change the driver to make these two separate features work together. Okay, I'm going faster because we have demos. Um, yeah. And, uh, fixing the containers item should be ordered by position ascending. Yeah, so it's the same as widgets, for example. Okay, position ascending, okay. Uh, date descending, position ascending. Adding an assist to identity part recalled identifier and normalize username because we query on that. Yeah, yeah we had some measurements and yeah, it will help. I also did some post styling. That's why it's. Uh, it's uh, and one of the best features in SQL Azure is that based on your usage, it will create the indices for you. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Recommendations and yeah, that's fine. Update, create this script context to query last latest content. Yeah, right. um, I think, uh, approve this change. It, it's a minor change, but it makes sense, so yeah. Layouts, okay. Code styling, then one ten next content types remain commented out view class, okay. Code styling and page, blah, blah. Content types, the same thing as on the F branch. Good job. Uh, no, no, it's it's different. So, um, so. This, it's a lot of changes, including code styling, because I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> but but the, the the actual change is that I standardize the validation when you are editing the display name and or technical name of a content type, a content part, or a content field. And uh, now you know it won't. It won't get into ambiguous states with special characters and stuff like that because without this change, you can you can create content types with um, 
where the technical name contains an ampersand or a, or a question mark. And then when you try to edit it, you will get a, a potentially dangerous request error. You see here, add error model, we have a translation of and then dot text. And in you know, core, well, in ASP.NET Core, there are two translators, one for HTML and one for strings. So in this case, we reserve a string localizer, so we don't have to call dot text and it won't be encoded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and yep. On some further changes uh, on uh, related to this one. So yeah. So doing the same thing on Orchard Core, which will be quick. If there are too many things, I I'm like, what's this guy? So there is. Okay. Um, I will skip that for later because I want to do the demos first. So we have the time. Um, demos, we have Ara, and I'm glad Bertrand is here, Benedek will be Zoltan's voice, and Soteris is here too, so they will have something to say. Um, Ara from Cloud Construct, builder of Orchard Sites, <laughs> uh, joined by his colleague Brian and Mike. So. Are, are you presenting, Ara? I will make you a presenter if you are doing that. Or is yeah. It? Okay. And you are a presenter, so you can start sharing your screen. And you will tell us what you did and show us how it works. Sure. Just can people see my screen now? Um, Not yet. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see it now. I can't, I, and I'm recording, so I win. And now I can. <laughs> and you're starting with a new site you made, beautiful. Yeah. So, um, thanks everybody. Uh, so, uh, this demo is related to tags functionality, which was present in what I call Legacy Orchard. Um, Orchard one. And Orchard 1. <laughs> Um, and I have my colleagues, Mike and Brian, on the team, on the call as well, who um, are working on Orchard Core sites with me. Um, and this is a new site we're launching soon. Uh, it's for a company called Safety Insurance. You may have heard of it. Um, but their content requires filtering um, by a few things. One, by categories at the top. And then on the left, kind of a freeform tagging. Um, filter and also search on the top right here. Um, so when we did these comps, we kind of planned this out and in my head I envisioned, you know, something like the tags feature in Orchard 1 um, being available. We found out it's not there yet or wasn't planned. Um, so we set out to kind of build our own um, and I saw some threads in GitHub about uh, maybe abandoning that feature and going with just taxonomies to kind of handle this. Um, Sebastian let me know of that kind of decision, but I did see some back and forth in there where it looked like people were still kind of up in the air on if tags made sense. Um, I'd like to point out that, you know, it's my thought that they do make sense as a separate module and functionality. They're, a, they're much lighter weight. Um, in my opinion, they're easier to scaffold for maybe not an advanced user. Um, and I think they're still helpful. Uh, it gives people options on how to kind of tag uh, different content items. So this demo is basically, as you can see here on the front end, um, you know, we can filter things by tagging. On the back end of the site, we have one of these content items. Which is what you're quite sure you go too fast. What happened? Sure. You clicked on the checkbox. Was it just REST API calls or I didn't see the URL change? This is a full page refresh. Oh, I see. Now I see that. Tags equals. Okay. See it up here. Yes. Okay. And you made your own controller? Correct. So page. In our controller, we're using the content manager to filter out by tags. Okay. Good, good. And I can actually fire that up in the background while we're doing that. While we're Specifically, we use Razor Pages uh, for this piece. Thank you. And Razor Pages, 
uh, but you are using the theming engine. So, yes. So correct. That, so you just the razor page just outputs the, the content of the page, and the theme is coming from the theme. Okay. And um, and so here on get you end up okay. And the razor page handles also the communication with the client. Okay. Good. Um, do I have to get latest here, Mike? Maybe let me just pull the latest. Is an example filter in here, Mike, right under views or pages? Pages? Uh, this would be under pages, and then it's the content page. Okay. So I think you also made a extension. The, the code behind it is the interesting piece here. Okay, so that would be in here. Yes, yeah, so it looks like here we have a service with a helper here to grab all the tags. Um, I haven't actually looked at this code, so feel free to jump in, Mike. But um, yes, yeah, so the other aspect I can kind of explain is there's two pieces. One, the UI to tag the content. So here um, we reuse the, I think it's the multiple picker. UI on um, the view select, multi view select. I remember because I mentioned that to Soteris yesterday. Multi view select, which we use in other fields in Orchard. That's why I told you to use that because yeah, uh, it's it's a very nice one and super customizable. You can do everything with that. It's crazy. Yeah, so you can search or you can add a new tag or you can use an existing. Obviously, remove, which is nice. Um, and then when you persist this in the publishing pipeline, we then add it to a settings area that adds all the tags, unique tags here. Question, um, because I had the same discussion yesterday with Soteris. Do you create the tag only when you publish or when you click create tag in the multi view select? Only on publish right now. Okay. Um, so right now that's part of the publishing pipeline if you come in here and want to remove a tag from there i don't think we we don't have the logic in yet to go through and remove the tag from existing content items is something i have i want to talk about with this committee should it be something we want to put in orchard core but that was the thought um, and here you could obviously um, remove existing ones um, or, or add ones as well. So you can do it right from here. Um, and it's nice because the scaffolding of doing a, oh, this thing's annoying in Skype for business. I'm trying to get over here. <laughs> the, you know, we have categories here, which is a taxonomy, which is, is nice, but to kind of scaffold that up is a little more difficult. Um, and this UI is, seems more friendly to me to be able to add random tags um, as you go. Um, and what else? The code uh, is pretty straightforward as well, as you can see. Um, for a page like the one we showed here, the filtering one, basically to apply this left-hand nav, you're querying um, to get all the tags um, in the system, and then to get um, content with by tag is that right here Mike where is that one um, if you scroll up to I think it's just called get let's see um, get categories we're right coming in um, yeah so the um, get featured marketing content async line 86 um, I think that's where we're doing Oh, I'm sorry. Can you go to content.cshtml.cs? That's what this is. What is it? The, uh, oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, delay in the, in the page. Yeah, so if um, the user submitted any tags, then we'll basically just go and search for all the uh, content items uh, which contain those tags. It's not really anything too spectacular. Um, but from the usability perspective, um, I found this to be a little bit easier than using the taxonomies, where I really just wanted something nice and lightweight, whereas with the taxonomies, 
I ended up having to make a number of different um, API calls to get everything that I needed. Um, so, <clears throat> Could you have um, an explanation? What's that? Do you have an index? Um, yeah, so here. Yes. I think so. You talking about this, Sebastian? Um, yes, index provider. Okay, tag part index provider. And yeah. here, uh, tag, uh, tag part, okay. Tags. Yeah, so we have some here. We still have to do this graph QL piece we haven't done yet. Um, and some of the liquid, I think, probably. Um, but we haven't had to use that yet. So before I did it, I wanted to make sure it's something people thought was useful. But And we added these kind of extension helpers, which are pretty helpful um, here to get all the system tags, to get the tag content items, um, and get all items tagged, and then get items that have a specific tag. Um, that, so that's the module there. And then... I don't think there's much else to show other than probably what Mike said on the taxonomy side to kind of populate that and join on the different um, types of taxonomies and stuff is a little more cumbersome. So it could be useful for somebody who doesn't need something so complicated as taxonomy to easily just scaffold out a, a tags module and then query content by a single string. So that's the demo. Thank you. And so about the taxonomies, the idea is not to make it more complicated for the user. It might be a little bit more complicated for the developer. I agree. But yeah, the idea is that for the user, it will be the, or the dev, the, the, the site creator, it should be as simple as the same thing, tax part or adding a field to a, to a content item with the same editor that you used. But it's just that the, it, then you will not have this screen because the taxonomy will allow you. Did we lose them? They're still there. I'm back. Am I? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I have to restart sometimes. Uh, no, I was saying, yeah, so for the site creator, it might be, yeah, it should be as easy. So we will not have this screen, the settings screen to measure tags because the taxonomy will let you edit the tags like you made the categories. Uh, and the UI will be exactly the same with the tags multi select uh, editor. It's just that the API, I understand will be harder to write to store a tag in a taxonomy instead of storing in the settings. That's the only thing. So what I think, um, but everything else you have, you have the razor extensions, uh, um, you have a tax part, you have the indexer. So the indexer will be exactly the same indexing. Uh, well, we don't have, an, we don't need another index because there is already an index for taxonomy. So we can query uh, the, yeah, the difference is that here you query with a simple string, like the tag name. Mm -hmm. and today, we, in the taxonomy, it's just IDs, because this way you could change the taxonomy name without having to change your queries or your indices. Uh, that's that's the design decision. Um, also, the nice thing with your solution is that when you have a tag spot and you want to render the tags, you don't have to query anything or to ask the in-memory taxonomy and the terms, you just, you have the tags, it's in the data. And an option will be to also store the display text of the taxonomy inside the content item, so that we don't have to do lookup if we just want the, the name. It could be desynchronized, but uh, the same way for tags, if you just delete the tags, you will still have the tags, so that's the same issue. Um, and the advantage also with taxonomy is that uh, well, there is a single module and uh, taxonomy terms are content items. So you can then add more metadata to terms, so tags. 
and if you want to reuse that that that's that's why people said they want tag tags to be done with taxonomy at the same time i told you do whatever you want because you are depending on that you want to work on that and and nobody else did anything for tags so i mean the ones who do things win if you just say i want things to be this way sure but it's better to have something that works and is not perfect or as well designed as everyone would like to be uh, but that works and uh, that works for you um, so i'm glad you have done that i th so i i don't want to take it in core yet because i want to give the opportunity to have the one with taxonomy in core and that would be a, a mistake i think to take it this way in core because if we really decide to do it then it will be a huge breaking change to tell people hey the tags that we shipped well now it's it's a breaking change that we have to use taxonomies or we will have to to maintain that for a long time like we did in Orchard one we did some deprecated deprecated modules like the custom forms that became the forms module or the custom properties that became the the projection module things like this um, but what i see here is that you have done most of the work so where i could help is by updating your code to actually manage the taxonomy internally so because that's that's the hardest part i think uh, and then this way we will have the same thing we could use the same thing that's that's what i think should be should be done um, so yeah but that's a, that's a good module i'm kind of ashamed that we talk about raising an, a one zero and we have a blog recipe and we don't even have tags on the blog so we can have we have a predefined text field which could be used for that but that's not as uh, easy as having this tags module unfortunately um, uh, yep so it's nice and i like the way you customize your own pages to reuse the api so you have good api to reuse the content directly super useful cool um, so uh, Sebastian, may I? Go on, Mr. Therese. Okay. Uh, nice demo, uh, by the way. Uh, well, um, I'm uh, on the side of uh, taxonomy, so... Uh, yeah, I talked know? to Sir Therese and we talked about that, and yeah, he said that he also yes. thinks... And actually, he pinged me saying, yeah, tags, I want tags, but I want them to be taxonomies. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's well, interesting. Yeah. I agree we should be taxonomy because we were talking about we were discussing it on GitHub and he found the thread and he pinged me saying I think tags should be taxonomies. Sebastian wrong. And uh, and uh, he said I, I agree with Bertrand and Zoltan. And uh, Yeah. Uh, well I think that uh, the first step is uh, what uh, Ara is uh, has done that uh, we need to display taxonomies as uh, in a multi-select uh, layout so all the terms to be there and uh, yeah so this, term, yeah. this ui uh, is, is perfect right that you yeah, agree with that the, the ui is perfect and just imagine, instead of uh, tags you have the, yeah, the terms the top. so yeah what i sh so the, the default tax and uh, this screen is perfect because we see the taxonomy in the categories this is a mm -hmm. flat taxonomy but if it was a hierarchical taxonomy we will see the the tabs well the, the spans for each subterm so i made that because it was easier for me to make this editor but the editor you made here for tags we should have the same one for taxonomies so that we can find terms in a taxonomy by just typing and mm -hmm. also handle the open taxonomies where we could type something and add a taxonomy term directly to the taxonomy. So the, the behavior will be exactly what you did here, okay, with this editor. It's just that, yeah, then th that's the idea, to have two different editors, one with just checkboxes for closed taxonomies and one with this one that could allow also open taxonomies. And uh, maybe, well, it doesn't show the, the hierarchies mm -hmm. Uh, so if you have a hierarchy called taxonomy, you might prefer the top one, but maybe you prefer the second one. So let's them choose and pick the, what they want by providing what we call field editors. Um, that would be good. And then about storing these tags in a specific taxonomy named tags, named tags or named whatever, because the nice thing also with taxonomy is that you could have two 
or three different instances that have different lists of items. Okay? You can create tags if you want, but you can create categories as long as they are flat and you want this editor, that's, that's fine to have many of them. Um, that's also an advantage of using taxonomy in this case. And the UI here, you will have um, um, already the editor to add and create new items, to filter them, to search for them. Uh, that, that's why you want to reuse taxonomies. And the fact that a tag will be a content item, so with custom properties if we need to. And after that, we will have only one module to maintain taxonomies? Yeah, also. As long as we don't make the tags module too complex, because that was a concern. They, I mean, when you develop a website, uh, like Ara did and Mike and Brian, you don't want to spend too much time of just making a new module that is complex when, when your need is, is simple. You have to go straight to the point, and the easiest way to do that was to do the tags like they did. So that's totally understandable, that, that's the way. And um, I will love if you could um, release it on NuGet or on GitHub so that people could use it, because that's the only thing we have right now. Uh, we have taxonomies. Sure. But... And I think, uh, sorry, and I think there is some work to be done when you delete the tag. Is that right, uh, uh, Mike? Yeah, so and we need to clean up, like there has to be some job that would go back and find all content mm -hmm. items and have to republish them without those tags on them. So that's something to think about, um, I guess. And is that how the old one worked in Orchard? It seems like it could be a large <laughs> process. No, well, no, no, no. In Orchard yeah. one, we had a, it was all relational. So it was a table and a join table between the tags. So if you deleted a tag, the relationship would be deleted with a cascade delete, okay? Like, uh, and I it when all that. So it was automatically deleted from content items, but it was a different model. Here, it's a document model. And I'm wondering with taxonomies, what's happening if you delete a taxonomy term? I don't remember. I don't remember what's happening. So because, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it cleans it up. I think it doesn't works. clean, but it's okay because when we will iterate on the, on the... It will not find it. Won't yes, it? yes, yes. So in your case with tags, because the storage is the part, you you don't check when you list the tags if they exist or not, okay? You just display them. Maybe they have been deleted, but you have it in your document, so you, can't, you don't know, unless you query every time. With the taxonomies, what we do is that we just have an ID. So you have to do a lookup. It's an in-memory lookup, but there is an API to say from this term ID, give me the term content item with all its properties and display text. So you do a lookup and that's why we have a liquid filter. You will not need it in tags, but in taxonomy, we need the liquid filter to say from the term ID, give me the term. So we say pipe taxonomy term. And then we have a content item. And there, if it's null, it means it doesn't exist. So we can ignore it. That's that's the 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 nice thing with the lookup. It's bad to have a lookup, but it's an in-memory lookup, and I mean it's 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 an easy lookup. When you like, when you envision the new tags as part of taxonomy, when you set the content type here, are you going to add no. like a ter a term well, um, part, or well, how would that be different? So as so, well as if every tag is a content item, it could get kind of crazy on this no. page. Like, would there be a filter there for that? Um, kind of crazy, like for taxonomies. So That's a lot of content, that's all. Yeah, but they, are, they don't have to be displayed here. OK. So when you create a taxonomy type, so in Orchard Core, you create a type, and you uncheck listable. Okay, so it won't appear there. If, and if then it's you, not listable, it won't be there, right? Sorry? If it's not listable. Yes, that's it. You don't check listable. So if you go into content types, you uncheck uh, listable. So edit okay. edit anything and you will see there is a listable, securable, and things like this at the top. And um, yeah, I'm waiting for the page. You see listable determines if an item of this content type can be listed through the UI. So you don't check that. And then when you create a taxonomy, you say it's a taxonomy of, and you select which type you want this taxonomy to be of. So this way you can have, you can create a tag content type, 
and a taxonomy named tags that will contain the tag content type and the tag content type will have a display text and that's it and the title so the title part will be the display text and that's it and you will just be able to add the, that the taxonomy the nice so what we could do also and i was suggesting that to so actually, uh, is in the taxonomy module we could have a feature named tags so that when we enable the tags feature we could automatically create the tag content type that is not listable which has a display text the taxonomy tags attach it to the taxonomy tag so when then you go to taxonomies you see the tags we could even add a tags menu item that points directly to the tags taxonomy to bootstrap the the tags integration in taxonomy and then it's the same story as you did it's just that the feature will configure the taxonomy to handle the tags for you and then if you want to create another type that will be a different set of tags fine or you can create another taxonomy that you call special tags that will also be a set of tags the same content type but it's a different oh, set. oh admin tags admin tags whatever yeah and um yeah and what we are missing also here uh, from orchard one is the the tag cloud but that's different and the nice thing is that if you do a tag cloud well let's call it a term cloud and then we can do a, a tag cloud for any of the taxonomies that's the idea so yeah um, but you, you did you did the 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 job for the for the for most er, almost everything to work with taxonomy because it's the same thing is just that we need now to change the api to go to taxonomy so if you make it on github i'm uh, i'm volunteering to to change that to to use taxonomies instead because i'm more familiar with taxonomies i made the taxonomy module in your core and so um, so i could help with that just okay. and where do people publish like is, since there's no real is there a gallery yet like so or is it I don't, you know, <laughs> yeah i want i don't to create a gallery now for <laughs> core. Uh, one so put it on github but our gallery now is nuget okay? okay so you can put modules on nuget they're just packages and that's how we intend to reference modules you just you just link to the NuGet as long as it's on github that's fine but if it's also on NuGet that's even better and what I do in my projects is I automatically publish my github projects on NuGet with the APIs and AppVayor and everything or okay. DevOps whatever you want and um, yeah and what we will do at some point is a directory so we can list modules and where they are on which gallery and the github and everything so we won't host the packages we will just have a directory of things uh, and the fact that they are nougat Yeah, I think we have it up here already, so I'd have to move it to NuGet, but that sounds good. Somewhere. Oh, here it is. We have it under Orchard CMS Boston, because <laughs> we had a user group here for a while um, that I had started years back. So yeah, it does, the module does live here. So you're saying just get it over to NuGet. Sound may have died there. You're, you're sharing. I'm back. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'll let whoever else had a demo go ahead.
Okay. Bye bye, Dennis. Uh, talk to you on Thursday. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, all. <laughs>